Hello, it's Lucy, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'll be talking about the difference between Weinberg versus McCormick computer science. For those of you who don't know, Weinberg is our College of Arts and Sciences, and McCormick is our School of Engineering here at Northwestern University. First, let's talk about the different degrees you would earn at Weinberg versus McCormick. At Weinberg, you would earn a Bachelor of Arts, which has a greater emphasis on the arts and humanities, Whereas at McCormick, you'd earn a Bachelor of Science, which has a greater emphasis on science and math. Neither degree is better than the other. They're both bachelor's degrees. They both have the same value or worth. They both provide you with the same opportunities, whether it be um, like research, extracurriculars, internships, job applications, a bachelor's degree, um, whether it be in the arts or the sciences is basically valued the same. In terms of the actual major requirements for the computer science major, they are also exactly the same. If you are a student in Weinberg versus McCormick, you will take the exact same computer science classes, the exact same core curriculum, electives, breadth courses, project courses, they all are the same. And this is to make sure that anyone who receives a degree in computer science at Northwestern has a thorough education in all of these different areas. As a computer science major myself, I can't tell the difference between a Weinberg versus McCormick student if I'm just sitting in a class with them. I either have to ask them or it'll sometimes just come up in conversation. And from my own experience, I think I've met around an equal amount of Weinberg and McCormick students. Like, I don't think that there is a significantly larger amount of CS students in either school, and that's because both schools have really great benefits of their own. Now that we know that the opportunities are the same and that the major requirements are the same, let's go on to talking about the differences between a Weinberg versus McCormick CS major. The key difference is in the non-major degree requirements. So for Weinberg, everybody has to fulfill the language proficiency requirement, the first year seminar requirement, and the 12 distribution requirements. Whereas in McCormick, everyone has to complete the four mathematics requirements, the four engineering analysis and computer proficiency requirements, the four basic sciences, three design and communications, seven social sciences and humanities, and five unrestricted electives. In total, you need 45 units of credit to graduate with a Bachelor of Arts from Weinberg, and you need 48 units of credit to graduate with a Bachelor of Science in McCormick. This is only a three unit difference, so it's not a huge deal, but it's something to consider. Now I'll talk about the Weinberg specific requirements. First, I'll talk about the foreign language requirement. If you can test out of the foreign language requirement um, during your time at Northwestern, then this would put you at a huge advantage if you are a Weinberg student, because typically if you cannot test out a foreign language, you have to take six credits, which is the equivalent of six classes here at Northwestern, and this usually is spread off out across two years. So a lot of people will wind up taking a foreign language freshman and sophomore year every quarter. And language classes are very intensive in college. They are much more intensive than they are um, in high school. And classes often meet every like five days a week. Um, and it is definitely a very like big burden or time consuming activity when you're trying to juggle your other classes. So ways that you can test out include um, AP credit or also testing out through a placement exam here at Northwestern. So when you enter, you have the opportunity to take a placement exam and this will either place you into a higher level um, language or, or you can test out completely, which would be really awesome. Um, and then if you are able to test out so if you have AP credit or you're confident that you'd be able to test out of a foreign language, Weinberg might be a great option for you if you're trying to get ahead of your credits. On the flip side, if you don't know any foreign language or you're not comfortable or you don't want to learn a foreign language, then maybe McCormick would be a better choice for you. Another Weinberg specific requirement is the first year writing seminar. Every freshman has to finish two seminars within the end of their freshman year. A uh, side note, if you're a transfer student, you are exempt from this policy, but for those of you who are not transfer students, this is something that every Weinberg student has to take. Um, and it's meant to just improve your writing skills and your revision skills. And often it is helpful when you start taking some other literature or fine arts classes in Weinberg. 
So if you like writing and the idea of being in a smaller size seminar where you can have closer relationships with your professors and other students sounds like something you'd be interested in, then maybe Weinberg would be better for you. If this is something where you're like, I hate writing, I do not want any part of this, then maybe McCormick is better for you. Some other Weinberg requirements include the distribution requirements where you take two courses in six different areas. These include natural sciences, formal studies, social and behavioral sciences, historical studies, ethics and values, and literature and fine arts. For the natural sciences, there are a lot of different options. A lot of people try to avoid like bio, chem, and physics um, because they're harder. So a lot of people will take like geography or earth science or like environmental science. Um, so you can definitely get out of taking like any of those harder classes if you want to. Uh, for formal studies, this is usually like your math or computer science courses, which will already be fulfilled just by being a computer science major. Um, for social and behavioral sciences, this can range from like economics to psychology, sociology. Um, there's a huge variety of classes that you can take. Um, historical studies is what it sounds like, um, just a lot of different history classes. Um, some fun ones could be like classics classes, which I've taken. Um, and then ethics and values usually have like a lot of philosophy classes or um, a lot of religion classes will count towards these. Um, for literature and fine arts, these can be a variety of different writing classes. They can also be music classes. Like I took a gen music class and I thought it was really interesting. Um, so there's definitely a lot of variety and that's kind of the idea of getting a holistic liberal arts education. Now I'll focus on the McCormick specific requirements. So first mathematics, you are required to take single variable calculus one and two, and then also multivariable calculus one and two. Um, you're also required to take four units of engineering analysis and computer proficiency. These classes are known to be harder and they can sometimes have some brutal curves, um, but these usually have a focus on linear algebra, MATLAB, um, differential equations, and like mechanical, electrical, thermal, hydraulic, and chemical systems. Um, so if that's stuff you're into, those are definitely some great classes. And then for basic sciences, um, picking from physics, bio, chem, and earth and planetary sciences. So um, if you're someone who really enjoys those types of um, science classes, then this would be a great option for you. Um, and then also three units of design and communications. So this includes writing classes, design classes, and speaking classes. And I know a lot of people have said they really have benefited from their speaking classes because um, I feel like there's like a stereotype that engineers are kind of like hermit crabs and don't like to get out. So like being able to speak well is really important. And I think that's like honestly something that should be required for every college. Um, five basic, um, five units of basic engineering. So these can include classes like computer architecture, um, computer programming, electrical science, fluids and solids, material sciences, um, probability, stats, quality control, st systems engineering and analysis, thermodynamics. Um, and then in addition to that, you also need to take seven units of social sciences for humanities. Um, this is also known as your theme. So a lot of people will choose a theme, um, like for example, psychology, and then they'll take those classes in that. Um, so I think that's like a cool part of it. And so you're not completely deprived of social sciences and like the humanities and arts. Um, and then five unrestricted electives, which is exactly like it sounds like. Um, just any like classes that you feel like taking, you can also like add a minor and count some of those towards that. So as you can see, McCormick has a much larger focus on STEM. Um, so if you are someone who really likes um, working in STEM, then McCormick would definitely be better for you. If you're someone like me where taking like chemistry and physics sounds awful and taking like thermodynamics and like fluid mechanics, like I don't even know what those things really are. Um, yeah, so if you're like me and you don't want to take those classes, then maybe Weinberg would be better for you. Another thing that I would like to talk about is AP credits. So if you're in Weinberg, you can only count up to a maximum of two AP credits 
towards your distribution requirements and you can choose how you want to spread those out. Um, whereas in McCormick, you can count like an unlimited amount of AP credits towards the um, basic like engineering requirements. So if you're someone who's coming in with a ton of AP credits, um, specifically in more like STEM classes, then it would be really beneficial to use those um, in McCormick. And for those of you who also have a ton of AP credits, but you still want to do Weinberg, that's still okay because you can count them towards your like unrestricted electives um, so that you know, you can still graduate earlier, it just won't count towards like your distribution requirements. And then lastly, I think a lot of people want to know how easy or hard it is to switch between Weinberg and McCormick. And from what I've heard, it's relatively simple. Um, you just submit a form, whether you're in Weinberg or McCormick to go to the other one, and then usually the registrar will process it pretty quickly. Um, I do want to make a note that it is, I would personally say, easier to switch into Weinberg just because um, a lot of the distribution requirements don't need to be taken in a specific order. Whereas um, for McCormick, a lot of those classes are sequence classes. So you have to start at the beginning of the year and then take them sequentially. So it might be harder to fit those in your schedule um, just because everything, a lot of those classes are in sequences, but it's definitely doable. There are a lot of people who switch into McCormick. Um, there's also a lot of people who switch into Weinberg, but yeah, I just wanted to make sure that everyone knew that it is possible to go between the schools. So I guess the big takeaway is that it really doesn't matter which college you choose, whether it be Weinberg or McCormick, they both have the same opportunities in terms of extracurriculars, research, and job opportunities. They also have the same major requirements, so you're not missing out on anything there. Um, and then I guess it really boils down to what classes you'd rather take for your non-major requirements. Would you rather take more um, like liberal arts classes or would you rather take more STEM classes? Um, and then also like what AP credits do you have? Um, how can you line that up with your schedule? Um, and yeah, so I think that's all that I have for you guys. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye.